Dr. Giorgis, this is Katie and Sarah, Mr. Oh, Snyder's please daughter. Please, 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 please. I had the opportunity earlier to review your dad's record, and in addition, I just examined him. Because of this stroke, and it was a very large stroke, he's lethargic and he's not able to communicate with us. Yeah. Oh, it's hard. Yeah, it is. So we wanted to take this opportunity to try and figure out how we can best take care of him. We spent a lot of time learning about his medical problems, but we don't really know a lot about him. And so if you could just tell us about your dad as a, as a father and as a, as a man. He just loved his family. Um, I mean, he really liked to spend time with us and, you know, our kids. Mm -hmm. He's a very, very strong, proud man. Very proud of his family, loves his grandchildren. Um, likes to take care of people. Likes the family to be happy. Mm -hmm. He was really, you know, he's independent, but, um, you know, we, we always felt loved and very really cared for. Okay. So I understand the man who family was very, very important to him mm -hmm. and his independence was very important to him. And I can see that you, you care a lot about him as well. Okay. Yeah. And as I shared earlier, and this is not good information, but this was a very large stroke, a massive stroke that he had. What, is, what does that really mean? So it's hard, and stroke can change things very quickly, but now he's at a point, and this is such a large stroke, that his ability to be independent and be able to take care of himself likely won't come back. I know that's hard information to hear. Ever? I think so. We can always hope. We can always hope. But unfortunately, both because this was a large stroke and he had had other medical problems. I understand he had breathing problems and heart problems. Even before this stroke, over the last year or so, could you tell me how he was? I mean, he, he was okay. He got you know, he, was, he spent time with us and the grandkids and... He was pretty dependent on us to take care of him and with groceries and we had sometimes aides to come in and take care of him at home, but we've, we've been trying was, to take care of him ourselves to the yeah, best of our ability. He's, I mean, he's, you know, he's old, but he's fine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's always your dad. He's yeah. always your dad. Absolutely. But it sounds like, and please correct me if I'm wrong, even though he was always an independent person, over the last year, he's gradually needed more people to do things for him. I guess. It's yes. not a big deal. He's not a burden. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How did he feel? How did he feel? I can clearly hear that you want to do everything possible for him. Absolutely. How did he feel when when AIDS were coming in or um, how he was over the past few months. I think that although he didn't, we didn't think of him as a burden, he thought of us with our families. We should, he wanted us to be with our, his, our families and taking care of them. And it felt bad that we were doing so much for him, although we, we never thought of it that way. No. Mm -hmm. It was important for our time to be with him. So he was watching out for his family. Right, he's very protective of us. Yeah. 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 I understand your mom passed away a couple of years ago. Yes. I'm sorry. I can't believe this is happening. This is so hard. He was taking care of our mom at home, and again, mm -hmm. we were trying to help out as best could. Mm -hmm. But again, he wanted to do all of that himself because he felt that was his responsibility. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it was a very difficult time. Mm -hmm. These are hard things to think about now, yeah. but a lot of times what helps us, because we want to know what your father would want in a situation like this. Did your dad ever talk about when he was taking care of your mom? Any things that could help us know what he would want now? He didn't want her to suffer. No. He wanted her to be comfortable. Mm -hmm. and that was his primary focus, was to make sure she was comfortable. And we don't want him to be in pain. I mean, of course, 
I, I want, he has to come home. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So having yes. him back home yeah. is something that's important to you. But it sounds like, because again, we always want to figure out what's most important to your dad, that it's also very important to your dad as well. Yeah, he would, he would want, he would to, be want to be home. He would okay. want to be in the hospital. Okay. So hearing what we had said earlier, that your dad's had a massive stroke, that most likely he's not going to get stronger, though we wish he would. And also that he's got the breathing problems and the heart problems. From that information, first, do you have any other questions or thoughts about his, his illness now? Is he going to die? Right? Is he going to die? That's hard to hear. It's hard to hear and hard to say. <laughs> We're hoping we can get him back home with his family, which is where he would want to be. Yes. I have to prepare you that some th sometimes in people who have heart problems and lung problems and have had a stroke, things can change quickly. So we always have to be prepared for that. But we okay. are going to work hard, and we honestly think we can get him back home. Okay. Okay. What sort of help do you think you might need at home to help take care of him? Because he's likely going to be what you see now, in bed, not being able to do things for himself. What sort of help do you think you might need? I, I guess more AIDS. I don't know. Probably to help him with the physical care. Is he going to be able to walk? Is he going to be bed bound? He's never going to walk again. I think he's going to pretty much be bed bound. And you're going to need to be taking care of him because this was a massive stroke. How and long is he going to live? This is hard information to hear. Yeah. I want to prepare you. Okay. And it could happen very suddenly. We're hoping he might live weeks, maybe months. Oh my God. I wish we knew he was this. <laughs> Maybe over the past couple of months, even before the stroke, maybe he was starting to deteriorate. Maybe his body was starting to die. And he was trying to protect you, maybe. That would be like him. Good. Good. Because I hear this is a guy who watched out for his family. Absolutely. Have you ever heard of a program called hospice? Yeah. Yes. Okay. When have you heard about it? Those are people who are dying. They're dying. People who do hospice. So hospice is a program. A lot of times it's working with people who are dying. But most importantly, it's there to help take care of people while they're living, especially if the goal is to try and take care of the person at home which is what it sounds like your daddy really wanted. Yeah, he would want to be at home. Yeah. yeah. I, don't, I, don't, I don't think he'd want machines. Mm -hmm. No. No. So there's actually, we need to discuss some of those things. And there's a form called the MOLS form, which stands for Medical Orders for Life Sustaining Treatment. And that will help give direction to the doctors and the nurses and the paramedics as to how to take care of him the way your dad would want to be taken care of. Okay. Okay. So why don't we take a little break and then we can go over that most. Okay. Thank you.